Dre Baldwin with DreAllDay.com. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is something that I should have told a lot of you a long time ago, especially in all the videos where I talk about coaching, because a lot of players come here, they come to me and they complain about their coaches. They complain about the situation. And I've already made multiple videos where I talk about how to deal with a coach. But I want to explain to you what the what the coach's role is on any basketball team so that a lot of you players can put your you can kind of start to see things from the perspective of the coach so that you understand why you might be placed in the position that you're placed. One thing I don't want any of you to do is get in the comments bitching about your coach because you think he's he or she is different from the person I'm describing here in this video. I get it. Every situation is different, but listen, bitching to me is not going to make your situation no better. So just to review before I even get into this, if you have a problem with your coach, you got three options. Number one, talk to the coach and ask how it can be remedied. How can you get the outcome that you want? You got to know what that is, first of all. Number two, stop complaining. Just deal with the situation as it is. Work as hard as you can. Focus on having your attitude and your preparation in, in, in the space that's necessary for the team. And just keep working hard and your opportunity will come. And number three, quit the team, go play for somebody else. Those are your three choices if you don't like the coach. But that's not what this video is about. I'm going to explain to you what the coach's job is. Because a lot of players seem, a lot of you players, you get so focused on yourselves. So focused on your problems. So focused on what position you want to play. So focused on how everything is fair for everybody except you. That you don't, you lose sight of the whole team thing. Because a lot of players, like I said, a lot of you players, you come complaining about your situation. Like, listen, it's a team. All right? There's no I in team. I know it's an I in win. I think Michael Jordan said that. But in a team, what's best for you is not necessarily what's best for the team. And what's best for the team is not necessarily what's best for you. This is the coach's job on a basketball team. Listen really closely. The coach's job is to win games. That's it. A coach's job in basketball is to win games. The coach is not responsible for making you better as a basketball player. Now some of you, that might be come, come as a shock to some of you. Some of you might think you don't agree with that. Listen, the coach's number one priority is to win games. If the coach happens to make you a better player in the process, great. But that is not the coach's job. A coach who doesn't win games but makes all the players better and doesn't win any games, know what happens to that coach? He's no longer the coach. He gets fired. A coach who wins games but none of the players actually improved in skill level, guess what? Nobody's going to complain because they won games. Coach's number one priority is to win. Now, if you happen to get better in the process by working with that coach, excellent. If you want to get better at basketball, it is your job. To make yourself better. It's not the coach's job to make you better. It is your job. You do that outside of the team. If you happen to be able to do some things within the team concept and practice and stuff like that that make you better, that's fantastic. But it is not the coach's job to design practice around making you better. It is not the coach's job to design workouts or anything like that or drills or put you in a position on the court whatever position you think you want to play that's going to get you ready for college that's not the coach's job the coach's job is to win now if you happen to have those things happen in the process of winning great but it doesn't happen like that all the time i told a story a while back i was watching some video of kobe when he was in high school on his team kobe was the tallest player on the team he was like as a senior junior and senior in high school he's six five six six he was playing against, with a bunch of guys who were short, 6'2", 6'3", under, under six feet tall, white guys, black guys. None of them was, was at the level of Kobe Bryant. I mean, Kobe's one of the most talented players of all time. So Kobe was playing in a high post on offense. When they would play against another team, that team was playing zone defense. Kobe would be in the high post is going in the triangle. If y'all know what the triangle is at a post, ask your coach. That means going from block to block to high post, block, block, high post, block, block, high post, depending on where the ball is. That's all Kobe did on offense. He wasn't out on the perimeter doing all this dribbling and shooting J's and stuff. He did sometimes, but a lot of times their basic offense was Kobe in the middle. He was the center on offense. Now, did that hinder Kobe's ability to get ready for the pros? No. And why is that? Because Kobe worked on his game outside of the team concept. Kobe knew where he wanted to go. 
So he knew, all right, I'm a guard, even though on my team they need me as center, so I'm going to play center because that's what my team needs. And remember, the team's goal is to win. The best way for this team to win, Kobe's thinking, is for me to play center, so I'm going to do that. But the best way for me to play at the next level, wherever I'm headed, Kobe's thinking, I need to be able to do these things. So I'll work on those on my own. But when I come here to the team, I need to lock into the team concept, buy into what the team needs, and I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do to help the team win. That's what a good player does. All of you are capable of doing that. All of you have the ability to do it. There's nothing stopping any of you from doing that. All of you had to ad adopt that mindset. And Kobe Bryant's one of the, like I said, one of the greatest players of all time. Now, if we could also look conversely at somebody like LeBron James. I saw LeBron James playing high school, and he was pretty much playing guard. He was damn near playing point guard in high school, and he was bigger than Kobe was at that point in development for both of those guys. In LeBron's case, he happened to be able to play the same type of way in high school that he ended up playing in college. That happened for him, but it doesn't happen for everybody. If LeBron's coach had said, LeBron, we need you to play in a high post at center, LeBron would have did it because LeBron's a team player. He's a smart guy. He knows that that's what the team needs. LeBron would have had two choices, basically, either do it or get off the team. He wouldn't have had no other choice. He ain't in charge. No matter, even though he was a great player, nobody was going to come down and say, hey, listen, high school coach, you need to do what this 12th grader says or we're going to fire you to suit the needs of the 12th grader. No high school is going to do that. So you have, to, you have to submit to the needs of the team. So whatever the team needs, you got to be submissive to that and fit in. All you players out there, if you want to get better at basketball, while you're on the team, do what's asked of you. If the coach says, hey, I know you want to play point guard in college, but right now we need you a power forward because of your size, hey, do what the coach asks. What's stopping you from working on your point guard skills, whatever you, whatever skills those are that you want to add to your game, what's stopping you from doing it outside of the team? And here's the other thing. The coach's job when it comes to you personally, player, is to put you in a position that best helps the team win. And for some of you players, and this is this is very important, y'all need to hear this. For some of you players, the position that you play that will best that is best for the team is the bench. Some of you players are best most beneficial to your team sitting on the bench because in the game, you make the team worse. So if you're on a basketball team and you don't play as much as you want to play, there's a reason for that. The reason is when you're in the game, the team plays worse than when you're out of the game. And that's why you're out of the game more often. So if you want to play more, your presence on the court needs to make the team play better than when they do when you're not on the court. And that doesn't mean you need to pull up any statistics. It can just be obvious. I could watch a basketball game. I could walk into a high school gym right now, two teams I never heard of, and I can tell you, all right, when he comes in the game, they play better. And when he sits down, they get worse. Or when he gets in the game, the team gets worse. He shouldn't be in the game. It's obvious. I can watch one game and point that out. I can point players out. Or you could tell me, watch this guy, and I'll tell you a lot of stuff about one guy from watching one game. It's very obvious a player who makes his team better and a player who makes his team worse. If you are sitting on the bench... The reason you're sitting on the bench is only one reason. When you're on the bench, the team is better than when you're in the game. And if you want to get in the game more, you need to flip that equation so that when you get in, the team's level goes up. If the team's level stays the same, if when you get in the game or come out of the game, the team is pretty much exactly the same, you're not really making a difference, then what do we need you for? You're not effective. They could just either get rid of you or keep you but it don't really matter we can replace you you're a replaceable player that's the definition of average is that your presence doesn't make the game you, your presence doesn't make the room get any better doesn't make the room get any worse you're just there you just like the wallpaper all right don't matter if you're there or you're not there you don't want to be there that's no man's land and if you're making the team worse you, you should be on the bench you might actually end up being off the team what they need you for you make the team worse why should you get in the game the coach is not responsible for making you better. You do that on your own. All the videos is out here. Hoophandbook.com, the programs is out here. Y'all know what to do when it comes to working on your game on your own. I ain't even got to talk about that. I mean, how many people posting videos nowadays? A couple, 10,000 people posting workout videos for basketball. I ain't got to talk about that. I'm trying to talk to y'all about the mental side of it, the side that a lot of you don't get. 
and a lot of is a lot of complaining and bitching and whining going on from a lot of players and y'all coming to me like I'm gonna do something about your situation. What you need to do is fix get your mind right. You need to change the way you're thinking about the situation because when you change that, then you empower yourself to actually start doing something about it. But as long as you're complaining and thinking that is one thing that is not, you'll never be able to fix it. Work on your game. Dre all day. Dot com. Checking out this video. Make sure you follow all my top content up here. Follow me on all your favorite social networks right over here. And make sure you are subscribed to catch all the new content I put on on this channel every single day.